we're going to continue talking about exponential models. And we're going to use these models not only to answer particular questions you know, after a certain amount of time has passed, but we're also going to be looking for that variable of time. Right? Before, in our last couple examples, we were plugging values in for t, and we'll soon be able to actually plug values in for p of t and solve for that unknown variable time. Here's an example, the model p sub t, the amount after some amount of time t, will equal 200 times 2 raised to the t divided by 20. This represents the number of E. coli bacteria after t minutes, if the initial bacteria is 200 cells. So we are given this model. There's no model to solve for, we're just given the model as this. Now we know there were 200 cells to start with because that's in the, the area here for P sub 0. We're multiplying that times some value of R. In other words, it's, if it's 2, we're doubling this population. And it looks like it's going to be doubling every 20 minutes. This is our, our quote-unquote for every factor. If you aren't sure what I'm talking about, you can look back to one of my previous podcasts where I go over this model. Now we've already seen a question like this. How many cells are present after 15 minutes? In other words, what we're looking for is we are looking for the population after 15 minutes have passed. So thankfully, I know that I can just plug in 15 for that amount of time. So this is what I'm going to have. I'm going to have the amount after 15 minutes will equal 200 times 2 raised to the power of 15 divided by 20. Now you have to be careful here when you're raising a power to a, you know, when you're using the exponent as a fraction, just make sure you use parentheses. So when I plug this whole thing into my calculator, times 2 to the, and I'm going to put in parentheses, 15 divided by 20, I get P sub 15, so the amount of the population after 15, will equal 336.358661, and that continues. Now we want to know the amount of cells, so we're just going to, let's say, round to the nearest whole number. So this will be approximately 336 cells. So this is the solution for this first problem. We've already seen a problem like this. You're given the model. You need to solve for the amount of population or the amount after a certain time. So I'm given the time. I plug that in for T, and I'm good. In this example, how long or how... This is kind of messed up here, but how long, how many minutes? In other words, how many minutes will it take for there to be 1,442 cells? So I'm going to cross off this first part. We just want to know how many minutes will it take. So in other words, in this particular example, we are given the amount at the end. We are told there are 1,442 cells. There are 1,000. 442 cells, and this is going to equal our equation. We're looking for our value of t. Now, I did kind of go over an example like this, and what we needed to do was we, originally, we were just plugging values in for t. We know it's going to be more than 15, right? Because 15 minutes, there were 336. So maybe I try 16, 17. Maybe I try 30 and continue on from there. In this particular podcast, I'm going to go over a way that we can actually solve this value for t. So on the next page, I'm going to explain what a logarithm is. Now, in order to get that variable out of that exponent, we're going to need to talk about logarithms. I'm hoping to create another podcast where I talk about logarithms in more depth. But in general, I'll just go over a quick summary of what they are. If you're asked to calculate the logarithm, and you're going to see two numbers. You'll see the word log, you'll see a little small sub number, and you will see a larger number. So when you are calculating this, and you could put this side in your calculator, you'll be able to take the log of some number. And what you're finding is this value of x. Right? So you'll put in log of 12, and you'll get a number. So let's say that we had the ability to put in log uh, base a with 
B, right, log B of base A, if we were to be able to put this in our calculator and we hit enter and we got the number X, we got that as our solution, what are we getting as our answer? What is that in terms of this problem? Well, that value actually satisfies this equation. When you are getting this number X, what you're told when you're finding the logarithm of a number, you're finding the value, the exponent, that A needs to be raised to to get to B. In other words, when you take the log of B, when you have a base A, and you hit enter and you get the number 5 or 7, you're being told that is an exponent. So let's go down here to this example, these three examples. Here I have log 2 base 8. You can put this in your calculator and it's going to spit out a number. So let's pretend we didn't know what this number was. I mean, if we didn't have the ability to put this into our calculator, we don't know what this number is, so I'm going to say equal to question mark. I don't know what this is. But the number that it gives you is going to answer this question. The base, 2, raised to this number is going to equal 8. It's going to give you the exponent, right? When you take the log of 8 with a base of 2, it's going to give you the exponent that you have to raise to 2 to get 8. And we see here, we know that 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, so this question mark is equal to 3. Now obviously, the better way to write this would be to use an x or a y or another variable. So let's look at this next example. The log, we want to take the log of 16, where we have a base of 4. What we're looking for, this is going to give us an exponent. In other words, 4 is asking, 4 raised to some number, we don't know what it is, is going to give us 16. 4 raised to some number is going to give us 16. What is that number? Well, we know 4 squared is equal to 16, so x is going to be equal to 2. Now, in this last example, we just see the word log, and we don't have a little number here. Now, if you just see the word log, and you don't have a little base number, then you're going to assume, and you always assume, that this represents 10. So when you don't see, that should be a 10, when you don't see a number, you should think right, the log is just going to be base 10. So in this example, we're looking for the 10 raised to some power is going to give us 1,000. That number is going to be 3, because 10 raised to the third power is equal to 3. Now, if you put log of 1,000 into your calculator, you will find that that equals 3. Because 10 raised to the third power, 10 raised to the third power gives us 1,000. Every time you take the log of a number, when you're calculating that, it's spitting out an exponent. You are told what the value is, is it's an exponent. Let's go to the next page to see why this is important. Now, we're kind of all over the place in this podcast. We first were given a problem that we weren't able to answer. I told you we needed to talk about logarithms first before we can answer it. And now we still aren't able to answer the question. This is the page where we'll be able to tie in some ideas that we can take back to that original question of how many minutes will pass until we have that 1,442 cells. This is the property that we're going to use. If I ask you to calculate the log of 10 to the third, right, remember what this is saying. We're looking for the value. We don't know what it is. It's going to equal some number x. And this number this that we spit out here from when we put this in our calculator is going to be the solution to this equation. 10, right, because we don't see a little number here, we're talking about 10, raised to this exponent needs to equal what I'm putting in my calculator, so 10 to the third. So we see here that 10 raised to this power will equal 10 to the third. Now just look at this equation. We need x, we need some number of x to make sure that over here we have these two sides equal. So obviously what we see here is x is equal to 3. So what we find in this particular example, and there's a little bit more behind in the mathematics, but what we're using here is the ability to, when you take the log of something with an exponent, what we can do, so down here I'm going to generalize what we can do. When you take the log of some expression that has an exponent, we can actually take this exponent down 
and bring it out front. In other words, if you take the log of a to, to the b, you can write this as b times the log of a. Again, I'm not going to get into a mathematical proof of this. There are lots of podcasts associated with that. But I want to just illustrate this in a clinical math sense so that we can answer the question we set out to answer. In other words, if you're taking something, or if, you're ta if you have a, an exponential expression and you have a variable up as the exponent and you want to bring that down, what you want to do is take the log of that number because the log of an, an, exp excuse me, the log of an expression that has an exponent allows us to bring down this exponent out front. So, now we have the ability to go back and answer our question of how many cells remain, or how many minutes will pass until we have 1,442. Let's solve that problem. Now finally, we have the capabilities to answer this question without guessing and checking. We need to solve for this exponent. And up to this point, we had no way of bringing that exponent down, bringing that out of the the exponent, bring that variable. We need to get that variable down from that exponent. Now we have the ability to do that, and that is by using logarithms, taking the log. So before I want to do that, I want to isolate this term here. In other words, I want to get this by itself. I want to get this 2 raised to this exponent by itself, so I want to get rid of this 200. Now, I know I can get rid of this 200 by dividing both sides by 200, right? I want to undo multiplication by dividing both sides by 200. So what I find when I take 1,442 and I divide that by 200, I get 7.21. So this side will be 7.21. Over here, we'll see the 200 will cancel out with the 200. And I'll have 2 raised to the t over 20. Okay. Now, I need to introduce logarithms. In other words, I need to get this exponent down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides. So all I'm going to do in this step is just write the log of 7.21. 7.21 will equal the log of this whole expression here. So again, all I'm doing is just writing the log of both of these. Because if both of these expressions are equal to each other, then their exponents, you know, if I say that they're exponents, then those should also be equal to each other. So I can take the log of both sides. Now over on this side, is the only thing I'm going to do over here is now I know that once I have the log of an expression, and that expression has an exponent, I can take that entire exponent and write it out front. So that is the only thing I'm going to do in this step. I'm not going to calculate any of these logs I'm just going to write log 7.21 equal to, but now I can bring that exponent out front. So I'll have t divided by 20 times log of 2. There we go. Now, the most confusing part for students is realizing and remembering that log of 7.21 and log of 2, those are actually numbers. If you put those in your calculator, you'll get a number. So just like if this was a 5 or a 12 or a 7, you can divide both sides by log of 2. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to divide both sides by log of 2. And over here, I'm going to divide both sides by log of 2. And I'm going to simplify this. Now notice on this side, these will cancel. I'm just going to have t divided by 20. t over 20. And over here... I'm going to put this in my calculator. So I will put log and then in parentheses 7.21 divided by log and then in parentheses 2. So right now I'm going to put log of 7.21 parentheses divided by log of 2. And what I get, and we can round to, we can just round to the hundredths place here, we get approximately 2.2. 2.85. And this is going to equal t over 20. Now at this step, students get confused because they don't know how to get rid of this 20. Well, think about 2.85 as being over 1. 
and now this is just a proportion we can cross multiply. So we can cross multiply and what we get is t will equal 2.85 times 20, 2.85 times 20, which is equal to 57. 2.85 times 20 is equal to 57. Now don't lose track of what we just found. 57, 57 what? Well, think about what we set t equal to. What was t in this problem? t is time. And in this particular case, we were looking for the time it will take until we have 1,442 cells. We just solved that. So it will take 57 minutes, 57 minutes to get our 1,442 cells. Again, we could have set up this equation and plugged in different values of t to solve, guess and check, until we got the value that we were looking for. But the more straightforward way and more efficient way is to first isolate, isolate this term, this exponential term, and then take the logarithm of both sides. The reason we want to do that is because then the exponent, the exponent of that exponential expression will be brought down and we want that to happen because that contains the variable that we want to isolate. We want to get this t by itself, and we can't do that until we bring that down on the regular level. So we bring down that exponent by taking the log of both sides. And now I just need to isolate this. So I divide both sides by log of 2 because that's just a number. This side simplified to 2.85. And then to get the t by itself, I cross-multiplied and got 57.